Greetings and howdy howdy. I'm Chip. This channel is CP59Fit. The subtitle is Unconventional Healthy Living Strategies. If you don't follow me on YouTube, I'm sorry, on uh, Instagram or Facebook, you may not know that it has taken me a full week to get from my house sit in Denver through Chicago, connecting through Chicago, and into Washington, D.C. The initial leg, um, Denver to Chicago, was no real issue. But there was a train derailment in West Virginia, actually the train right in front of my train. We were one hour behind and the next train on the tracks when the SX, CSX empty coal car train hit the boulder, fell in, caught on fire, fell into the river. Two of the, uh, I believe the engineer and the trainee engineer had to be medevaced. Oh, I see my hair is a disaster. So please forgive me if I'm not at the top of my game. And the health thing I'm going to talk about today is definitely unconventional. But I've had several people tell me, why don't you talk about that? Well, I'll tell you why I haven't talked about it, because I had a mentor that tried to talk about it. But then he became concerned that he didn't want a lot of people to know he had a lot of precious metals at his house. I'm not going to talk about precious metals directly, but I am going to talk a little bit about what has happened with the, uh, the banks in the United States this week and hope you will see how that fits into the bigger overall health picture and some of the things I've put into place which allow me to live the kind of life I'm now living. You might be able to tell I don't have as much chin here. Can't hardly see it anymore. Well, there's a little bit if I go back. I learned a long time ago, if you stretch your neck out, you don't get as much of a double chin in a photo. But anyway, the United States uh, banking system has taken a severe hit about the same time I was trying to get back from Chicago to D.C. I have some theories and philosophies, and hopefully you have made some preparations. I guess I could be considered a prepper, even though I'm a, a digital nomad, so I really don't have a place to prep. But a lot of what I've done over the last two or three or four years has to prepare me for a situation just like this. Number one, getting healthy. Number two, losing weight, going from obese to overweight to almost normal on the BMI scale. Because I knew I had a feeling, a lot of indicators indicated that there was going to be a fourth uh-oh moment coming. And let's see what the first three were. The first one was a while ago, 2019. Oh, when the, uh, the repo market kind of broke the plumbing in the financial system. That was when banks didn't trust other banks' collateral to loan them money. Then there was the pandemic. And then there was... Oh, the guild, uh, guild crisis in the UK. And all of this is basically being caused by central banks playing with the economic system. And then, of course, the fourth one was uh, Silicon Valley Bank and Silver Tree Bank and uh, the one in uh, New York. Its name's not coming to me right at the moment. But let me tell you one thing I have learned. Those aren't the only banks that are overextended at the moment. I was trying to explain it to the lifeguard at the pool today. And the way I said, the way I described it to him was that during the pandemic, the government, all governments in the world gave away free money. Everybody's bank account, savings account swelled because they couldn't get out of their houses. As soon as they were turned loose, all that savings is gone and now everybody's using their plastic, their credit cards. I said, banks have basically done the same thing, except what they're getting caught in is the tightening or the increasing interest rates that the Federal Reserve has been doing. And if you had a, I should get a stick or a pendulum or something, let's do this to make do. I don't know what it says or if it says. I'll turn it around so I'm not advertising anybody. But if uh, this is when you bought, when a bank bought a bond and this is the maturity date, and this is the interest rate. This is principal. This is interest. So if the interest goes up, 
the principal of the bond goes down. The interest rates go down, the principal goes up. The closer, the shorter the maturity, the less volatile that is. So what basically happened with the Silicon Valley was they had long, long treasury. These are U.S. treasury bonds I'm talking about. It's not junk bonds. It's actually the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, which if you still have that, <laughs> you're probably a little bit silly in the head because there is no faith and credit. And that's the only thing keeping our system afloat is the confidence that you have and that the government will come through and rescue these banks when they do silly stuff. But SSV, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, had long maturity, like 30-year treasury notes, to be the collateral for all the loans they were making out to other people. So they'd loaned all this money out, and the interest rates were going up quickly, so the principal was going down. So when 25% of their depositors said, oh, I want my money now because... Uh, Mutual fund and uh, financial people are telling, oh, get, the, get your money out of the bank. Get, get your money out of the bank. And $43 million, or billion, $43 billion was removed from that bank in one trading day. That's why they shut it down, basically, because the bank ended up a billion dollars in the hole that night because they couldn't sell these long bonds fast enough. And honestly, going back to the pendulum, if the... 30-day note is paying more than the 30-year note. Which one are you going to buy? You're not going to buy a 30-year one that's already underwater, which means it's worth less than you're paying for it. So those are very hard to sell. So they were selling them at a loss, and they were still bleeding over here. So this big rescue thing, in my opinion, and I'm not a financial advisor any more than I'm a doctor. I just study this stuff. And I've been living it for now approximately four years. But what the federal government, for lack of all the alphabet agencies, the Treasury, the FDIC, the Federal Reserve, which isn't a federal agency, did was put a Band-Aid on a very deep knife wound. Bank of America, Chase, J.P. Morgan, PNC, every other bank is just as upside down with Treasury bonds as Silicon Valley was. So... Nobody can withstand a run on the bank, and that's really what this past weekend was. It was run on the banks, because just kind of like 1929 before the Great Depression, people wanted their money, and they wanted it now, and the banks didn't have it to give it to them. And people are going to tell you it's fractional reserve, but there is no reserve anymore. Uh, that was done away with, with Dodd-Frank in 2008 after the Great Financial Crisis. So anyway, why am I talking about the, all this and how does it relate to health? Well, after I sold my house in 2020, I started listening to some of what I consider the right people. And I believe I have put in place a system that somewhat protects me from this dust up or kerfuffle or collapse. I have very little cash in banks, just enough to get by. And everything else is in inflation-protected hedges, I guess would be the right word. You know, in other words, I'm not worried about this uh, banks collapsing because <laughs> I don't really have money under my mattress because I really don't have a mattress, but I have most of my cash out of the bank. And I have it in assets that can be moved easily and traded fairly easily. Not real easily, but fairly easily. And I have a stash of canned meat, and uh, some stuff like beans and rice that I really don't eat, but I would in a bind. And that's another thing you will see in later videos, is that my way of eating has really been off because of this train derailment. They gave us one slice of pizza for lunch, and then they came back and said, oh, you can have more, after those witches with a bee were handing it out. <laughs> and then they gave us a, I think a six inch I think I had ham and cheese uh, from Subway for dinner with a bag of potato chips, of course, or whatever, Doritos, something like that. And they didn't get any diet sodas, all regular soda. Of course, you can't buy diet sodas at stuff like Dollar Tree or Family Dollar. They cater to the lower income, and they are not too terribly concerned about their health. But anyway, let's just say that I'm 
kind of throwing this out there in the hopes that you, my followers, have been preparing, reading the writing on the wall, and that this wasn't a huge surprise to you. If it, if it was, and you don't feel prepared, the good news is it's not too late. Yes, I believe SVB was the first domino of many that are still going to fall. And if it's like other countries whose currency has devalued rapidly, then about 80% of this country is going to end up in abject poverty over the next decade. That's about how it's coming out in Bolivia and, uh, not Bolivia, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, and Argentina. But that's not 100%, so there is still time for repair. It might cost you a little bit more, but definitely my warning on the simplest thing you can do right now is to store up some non-perishable food products. Because I'm afraid that famine is going to be as big of a concern in the next year or two as banks bouncing. You know, we had banks bounce in the savings and loan crisis, which was, what, in the 80s or 90s? Then we had banks bouncing in 2000, not just checks bouncing, but banks bouncing. And it's already starting to spread contagion, which means it's affecting other banks. And it's all banks all over the world are incestuously intertwined. No, I don't usually talk about financial stuff, but I am in a group and I had a very wise person on a kind of like a Facebook Live, but in a private app thing today, who I'm regurgitating a lot of what they said. I'm not even going to tell you who it was. But I do agree with them, and I've kind of been following their mantra, which makes sure I have food, shelter, water, um, barterability, uh, basically all the necessities. I mean, if you have a place you can raise chickens, you might want to go buy a few hens because eggs are getting really expensive and that provides a perfect source of protein and vitamins. In fact, the egg is probably the, the most ideal uh, source of food you could eat. Uh, this should go up tomorrow on Wednesday. I will be on a train again Thursday. Only for three hours if all goes according to plan. Then I'll be on a bus for about three and a half, four hours. Then I will be at the beach, thank goodness. And I'm praying to God that it is sunny while I'm down there. I can't get in the water. It'll be too cold in the Atlantic in late March. But I can walk on the beach and I can get some suntan. Because I have been fading for months now. Well, I guess I did go to Planet Fitness in North Carolina. But traffic in Denver, whoa. 15 miles took you 30 or 40 minutes to go anywhere. So if the gym was 10, 11 miles away, I just didn't bother to go with gas over $4 a gallon. So I hope you're prepared. If you're not, reach out to me if you know how to get in touch with me privately and I will give you some, some resources that can help you prepare. But this is my warning. I think the first time on the dryer, I got my washer, washing machine going because I got to pack and get on the road in a day and a half. And I don't wear the same swimming suit to the pool twice because of uh, MRSA. I picked up that years ago, and it's very painful. So I wash my swimming suit and towel every single night when I go to the hot tub. But anyway, if you're not, if you don't feel you're properly prepared, please, please try to reach out to me. It's funny, the lifeguard I ran to, into at Mom and Dad's pool the other day, I, I had met six months, three months, six, at Thanksgiving. I don't know how long ago it was. But he's now asking me for, you know, well, well, the economy's good, isn't it? Or didn't they end the crisis? No, 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 they didn't. Watch this video, and then we'll talk some more. Not this video. Watch the Ray Dalio, uh, How New World Orders Come About, and you'll start to get a picture of what we're going through right now. doesn't matter if you're in Canada, Europe, Africa, Asia, the U.S., South America, Central America, the world is going through a shift to a new world order and what I believe will be a new world reserve currency. And it's not going to be the U.S. dollar. So U.S. citizens, we're in for probably the worst inflation we've ever seen, and it's coming soon. But at that note, I'm going to end this. Please subscribe. Thank you for a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a go to hell, whatever you feel like telling me. But that's my thoughts, and I'm spitting it out there. I will get back reviewing some of the 
speeches or concepts from the Low Carb Denver conference after I get settled at the beach, which will be probably next week. And you might even get another video with Leo. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Love you. God bless. Please be safe and take care. Bye-bye.